All right, now in today's video, I'm going to make a simple jig that will make your bandsaw safer. And cutting small things on the bandsaw sometimes can be a challenge. Anyway, I've got a pile of scrap wood. This is a 2x4 and uh, another 2x4 that I simply split in half on my bandsaw. Anyway, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to make a jig something like this only for smaller items smaller bits of wood even pen blanks so let me readjust my camera bring you in and i'll show you what i'm going to do okay now oftentimes we are cutting something that's round here's a little limb probably four inches in diameter and it's round and to just run this through on our bandsaw can be very dangerous you don't want to do that so this jig right here is designed for pieces of wood round I can just put in there and run through my bandsaw and do it safely and that piece of wood is not going to go anyplace I've got it lined with some 60 grit sandpaper okay I can even see it says 60 grit on the back of that nice coarse sandpaper right here I've got some uh, blocks of wood that have been cut at a 45 degree angle that I'm going to cut out of this piece of wood I'll do that on my chop saw anyway one one thing I'm going to add to that jig that I'm going to make I've got this sandpaper just glued onto these blocks of wood. I'm going to put a liner. You know, it's going to be something like that out of these two pieces of wood. I'll make it a little bit more of a level surface in there. Then I'll put uh, some sandpaper on top of that. So let's uh, I'm going to take this over on my, my chop saw and I'm going to just uh, cut these into some 45 degree angle wedges and uh, I'll come back okay now I'm showing you right now my original sled and I, I just discovered something that I have a saw curve right down the center of this okay so if I go in this direction I'm doing a cross cut operation, but I can also split this log or another round piece of wood. I can simply go down the center of that and line that saw kerf up. And I don't want to cut this log necessarily, but I'll just, I'll just turn my saw on and just show you. Uh, I would just advance my, my sled into the saw blade so that's another really handy operation that you can do and and do it safely okay okay I'm ready for a little assembly and I've got my platform marked out and my, my little 45 degree angle blocks are going to go like that. Okay. And I've got this marked down here so I can just uh, apply a little blue. Get her all done. Okay. Now I'll do one row here. And I've also got a center line marked on here, so they're all lined up. I'm going to do one side, get those all in position, and I'm going to take my handy dandy little brad nailer here, and I'm going to just uh, tack these in place. Okay. And I've taken the top of these blocks off because they were just a little bit too big. I'll get these in place. 
I'm not depending entirely on the glue. And what I'll do is screw these from the back side. All right. Making sure that my screws are not lined up with where I'm going to cut. And I think I'll just put a put a brad in the back of these. All right, then I'll just uh, take a screw and just uh, fortify those a little bit. Yeah, well, I see the. The sun's creeping in on me over here. It's a beautiful day in the Montana here. So, okay, I'm going to drill a pilot hole on the underside of uh, my jig. And I've also got a counter bore right here that's going to put my screw below the surface. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some uh, drywall screws. You've got to be careful with drywall screws. Don't use them for a faceplate, but uh, in this application they're just fine. These are probably inch and an eighth or inch. Okay. Yeah, and uh, those are going to sit below the surface. slide nicely on my my bandsaw table. So the next operation I've got these uh, pieces of uh, two by four material that I'm going to put in there like that. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these on my joiner and make a nice level surface right here. Okay on to the next step in the operation. And I'm about ready to glue on my next pieces right here. And what I've done, I've gone to my joiner and I've actually put a 45 degree angle on the lower side or edge of each one of these. And that's going to give me a nice crisp area down here, exactly 90 degrees. So I'm going to... Put a little glue on these areas, and I'll do the same thing. I'll, I'll brad them in place, and then I'll take a screw and secure them a little bit more. There's not going to be a lot of pressure on these one way or the other. So probably this glue and one screw is going to be, be plenty. Okay, I'm going to get that lined up there. That looks pretty good. Okay, let me move this so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Yeah. And right at the bottom of that, there's just a, a, a good angle. All right. Then I'm going to just take a screw and put it in each one of those. A couple operations left. I'm going to line this with some sandpaper. Okay.
Okay, now on this jig, I made a couple improvements. One was to uh, add a little runner down here that goes in my miter slot. And you may not have this on your bandsaw table. That's okay. You don't really need it all that much. And the other thing, as I run that along there, I wanted to make a, a zero clearance right in here. Okay, so if I have something, put it in there, I'm going to be supported totally right up to where I'm cutting. All right, now what really motivated me to make this particular little little jig was this piece of wood. It's going to be a box. This is actually some madrone. And as I was turning this, I had a little nub of wood left on there. And boy, I'll tell you, that's the worst thing you can do is try to run that through there held by your hand. Uh, you might put a clamp on there, but this is much better, much safer. And with that sandpaper on that, I just glued that on there with some, some tight bond glue. Put that in there and that's not going to move around on you. Let me just uh, trim this little nub off there. And and if you're not careful, that'll bottom out on, on your chuck on the inside and hold, hold your tenon out so it doesn't seat properly. We'll get that lined up right there. Now I could show you a lot of examples of how this would be a, a good jig to have in your shop. It's just a piece of scrap that I, I'm not sure what I was doing with it exactly. Um, let, let's say that we want to cut this off where this saw kerf is right in here. Okay, And this will certainly handle square pieces. Line this up. All right. You could probably run this piece of wood through there with your hand, okay? But the one thing this jig will do, this will hold this 90 degrees to the blade and give you a nice straight cut going through there. Now I could certainly run some more examples of pieces of wood that I would cut with this little, little jig. There, you can make one yourself. Here's one that I use to cut pen blanks. Now, I've got several videos on uh, my drill press and my bandsaw safety and different things like making this platform. Uh, I like the miter slot in here. Let me show you one more thing. Back in the day when I used to have a table saw, I bought this miter gauge, I think from Woodhaven, yes it's on the back here, Woodhaven, 1-800-344-6657. Oh, they got some really nice things. Now, this miter gauge fits in my slot here. Okay, and that's another way I can, I can accurately cut something at 90 degrees, okay, on this. This is wonderful. And when I sold my table saw after this terrible accident, I kept this because this was, you know, eh, kind of expensive. So this, uh, getting back to the uh, pen blank jig, I've got a little lockdown device on the top here. I can, I can adjust my pen blank lengths on that, lock that down. It also has a little, a little runner there that fits into my miter slot, okay? And I think I got this miter slot also from Woodhaven, okay? And that's really nice. If you're ever cutting uh, a small piece of wood, even something like this, I don't know, you can put it in there. I'm going to put the links to these videos up. 
uh, rather than haul out all these different jigs and fixtures that I got from my my bandsaw. But this is one of them, and this is something that boy you really should have. It's it adds a lot of safety. If I'm cutting something like this, okay, uh, you could do it on your table saw probably fairly safely. Um, chop saw, eh, your hand is pretty close to where you're cutting. Let's cut the chop saw out. I wouldn't do that. Bandsaw, yeah. And there's ways to uh, safely cut pieces of wood on the bandsaw. Thank you very much. Anyway, just a, a quick tip. Oh, you know what? Here's another tip. Okay, now, as I was making this video, uh, I was using my jointer. And I haven't had that, that jointer very long. And I've got these push blocks that have rubber on the bottom of them. And you know what? They don't hold very well. They still slip. So, uh, and I've had several different joiners over the years. And I always line the bottom of these with the coarsest grit sandpaper I can get. And here's some 60 grit sandpaper. And boy, it makes a big difference when you're running through there. So anyway, please subscribe to my channel. It means a lot. Share my videos if they uh, are useful for you. They're probably useful for somebody else. And this is the first video I'm working on in 2023. So, so I will talk to you next time. Thank you for watching.